The winter nights have started to draw in, so those sunset rides and post-work blasts might be a thing of the past. However, with winter comes night riding, so don't put away your bike just yet. With help from our friends at Exposure, we'll talk you through some of the kit you might need to consider buying. Plus, we'll give you some top tips on how to get the most out of your night riding. Riding around in pitch black woods with just a couple of lights to see where you're going is a completely new experience. And even riding trails you know like the back of your hand is completely different at night and loads of fun. Right, over to Doddy to talk you through some of the features you need to look for when buying lights. For riding off-road, you really need some decent quality lights. Now, before we get into that, let's just talk a little bit about the basics. So you're going to need to be referring to the lumens. That's the output brightness of a light. Right in front of me, I have a candle here. That is roughly equivalent to 13 lumens. Now, your average sort of commuter-based light, even those little small compact LEDs you get that you can charge up from your computer, they're going to be somewhere around 200 lumens, occasionally up to about 500. Now really for off-road use, you definitely need something a thousand and upwards, at the very least. First time you go for a ride with your lights, it's definitely worth taking a set of Allen keys with you so you can adjust the angle of these lights. The one on my head, super simple, easy to do, just by hand, move it around. I'm trying to get that so it follows my eye line. That does take maybe a couple of attempts to get that perfect. On the front light, actually to me, it looks like it's pointing down a little bit, but on this light, it's got a super wide beam. So that really lights up the trail way ahead of me, but also in front of my front wheel. On a different light with a less wide beam, you need to really work the angle so you can see the trail. It's exactly what's coming. Yeah, okay, cheers, Neil. So let's look at the types of light you're gonna need before you go night riding. Okay, so this particular light here, this is from Exposure, it's called a Diablo. Now at full chat, this is kicking out 1500 lumens. So this will certainly do the job off-road. However, you need to think about how you're gonna use your light. Now, some people will tell you that it's best to have them on your handlebars. Some people will tell you it's best to have them on your head. Now, they're kind of both right, but for different applications. If you're just riding A to B, putting them on your handlebars is the best position because you can have consistent light looking in the direction of where you're riding. If you're riding aggressively off-road, as soon as you go around blind turns, you're not going to have any light if it's just on the handlebars. And the same goes for crests. If you're going into a bomb hole, for example, you're going to have a long period of time when you're not going to be able to see anything until your light basically lights up what's in front of you again. Now, the general rule of thumb with serious night riding and being able to see everything the whole time is by having a twin setup. That means having lights on your bars and lights on your head. Now, again, there's different schools of thought on this, but the one that we found most effective is by having a slightly less powerful light on your head and having the big main beam on your bars. Now, the reason for that is you only really need to be glancing around turns on tight terrain or glancing over the edge of a bomb hole occasionally. For most of your riding, the handlebar light is gonna give you that real big flood beam, enabling you to see down the trail. So let's actually see how this takes effect out on the trail. We're gonna check out proper light setup. So I've got my exposure sits back on the bar. It's all built in, no separate battery, and it's up to 4,750 lumens, so super powerful. It's got high, medium, and low, but also 10 different settings for all those. So you can really choose how powerful your light is. So if your riding is maybe more mellow, you'll spin the legs out. You can have it a little bit lower and it's gonna last that bit longer. Also really important to know your burn time. So luckily on the back of this, I've got a really accurate uh, reading so it gives me two hours 34 at the moment on high 836 on medium and 20 hours and 38 are left on this on the low setting but even with the most powerful light on the bar it's really important to have one on your head as well situations like this I've got a steep downhill obviously my light is looking out at the horizon with the one on my head I can see where exactly where I'm going So as Neil explained, the ideal setup really is by having two sets of lights on your bike. You have your main beam on your handlebars and you have a much smaller, lighter light on, on your head. Of course, you don't want a big heavy light on your helmet. This is going to affect how your helmet fits. Because of the size of the light, the battery inside it can only kick out that much power for a certain amount of time. So think about this as more of an assistance light and you want to be using this conservatively. I would never use this when I'm riding to the trails. I'd only kick it on for those moments when you really want to attack that aggressive terrain. For the handlebars though, 
you can have something a lot bigger. So this is the Exposure 6-pack, and this particular one has something called Reflex technology built into it. It determines when you're riding slow, i.e. uphill, it will kick it down into a low beam to save power, meaning you don't have to take hands off the bars to do this. And it also senses with the accelerometer inside when you pick up speed. So it kicks out the full beam when you're going faster and it's vibrating and it's picking that up. It's a really intelligent light and for high off-road performance, it's absolutely amazing. But of course, there are many options available on the market at all sorts of price points. Now, whilst the huge handlebar mounted six pack, obviously it kicks out 4,750 lumens and it has that reflex technology to manage that, the exposure Diablo is far smaller, but it also has a little secret weapon hidden up its pocket. It's called tap technology. Now, when you select this mode and when it's on your helmet, you can simply tap the helmet or tap the light itself to change modes. Now, this is ideal for conserving battery when you're out on the trails, because sometimes it can be a faff if you're wearing big, thick winter gloves and that you're trying to select the mode just before you dive into a technical section of trail. When you've got tap technology on, you can have it on the lowest setting and literally tap your head, full power, hit the trail, tap again, and it dips it right down again. Now, this is also a really good feature if you choose to run a helmet light, if you're running in traffic, so you don't blind other drivers, so you can actually be quite sensible about the way you approach night riding. Now, of course, exposure lights are certainly not cheap, but you certainly do get what you pay for. You get a two year no quibbles warranty with these, and the quality of the construction of these is second to none. So they actually used to make lights for underwater for diving and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool that they've got this technology available for mountain bikers. Of course, a little scowl online, and you're gonna be able to find what appear to be bargain lights, which might work very well for a short time, and that might serve a purpose for you, but also can remind you that they're electrical products, and with batteries and stuff, you need to be safe with this sort of thing. And we have heard some horror stories about some bargain basement price lights out there. I know what I'd rather run. Ooh, quite dotty, we've got the kit, and that is blindingly light. <laughs> Sorry, uh, what about the ride, where are we going? Um, I figure local woods is best. You don't want to go too far in case you do run out of lights. Yeah. And you never quite know what's going to happen on night ride anyway. I don't want to ride anything too gnarly as well, because yeah. even with the best lights, you're not going to be able to see into the shadows. So yeah, just keep it a bit mellow. Yeah, it's pretty important to remember, actually, whatever you ride, even if you know it by the back of your hand, it's totally different at night. Yeah, absolutely. And you definitely need to factor that in when night riding. You also need to make sure that someone knows how long you're going to be gone for, how long you expect it to be, because Nasty things happen in the woods at night. <laughs> <laughs> As with any mountain bike ride, it's really important to be prepared and carry enough kit with you for the eventualities of punctures, broken chains, anything that can go wrong. Bearing in mind that you're on limited time when you're out night riding, it's really important to make sure you do carry at least the bare minimum. I always carry water on my bike. I always carry a multi-tool, which is part of my bottle cage here. It's tucked away, so I can never forget that. Now, actually, these days I've become quite addicted to running like one of these sort of enduro straps with an inner tube, CO2 cartridge, and a tire lever. In my pocket, I'll keep the little adapter, and I'll actually take a compact bag with me with some gloves, a beanie, and an all-important little rear light to make sure I'm safe to get to and from those trails. But one tip is make sure that when you do get to the trails, take it off, because firstly, they'll bounce off and you could lose it. And secondly, if you've got a friend riding behind you, you'll ruin their night vision. So just keep that for the road sections. Any other good tips for riding at night, Doddy, compared to day? Yeah, well, actually, I wear glasses always when I ride, but especially yeah. at night, because there's always like low branches and stuff that scratch me in the face, so look after your eyes, pretty much. I haven't seen any low branches, Doddy, I'm too <laughs> tall. Uh, also, it's likely to be colder, isn't it? So I normally go for rides at night that are fun rather than physical, so I like to really layer up. I've got my trousers, merino base layer, and an outer coat on tonight. Uh, and that's a good point, actually. We're both wearing dark clothes because we've chosen to drive here to these woods and we're riding and get back in our cars. If you're riding anywhere near traffic, make sure you've got reflective clothing on. Uh, it's definitely a good idea to go out with other people as well. So if you haven't got any buddies to go out with, I'm sure local trail centres, local riding groups will probably go out for night rides as well. Which is also a good thing because you'll be sharing light with everyone. So if you can't afford to get some really good lights outright, yeah. you can go out and sort of mix in between two riders. have got a bit more light spread, so... 
Good way of getting the sensation of night riding, I think. Convince your mates to buy the expensive ones. Yeah. Oh, dude, what are you playing at? Oh, it's a moth. That's it, wicked fun being out in the woods at night. Uh, it's completely different to riding in the daytime. If you want to see a video, actually, day versus night, click over here for that one. And if you want to find out exactly what not to do when you're out night riding, click down there. Hit that sub button and give us a thumbs up if you love riding at night.